Sheffield United. The club is the heartbeat of the city. It's called the Steel City for a reason. It's a very hard-working, working-class city. Storm football. It's a two-club city, Sheffield United and Sheffield Wednesday. The fans are tough to play against, they're electric, and, and they do give you that real edge. You know, if it's a three o'clock kickoff, the supporters are in the stadium at 12 o'clock. For us to be at Bramall Lane, 30 odd thousand, every seat full, singing a greasy chick butty song as the, as the game kicks off. Yelka! There is a stop! A thunderbolt from the captain! First ever Premiership goal! It's Sheffield United's living legend! It just had to be him! Oh my word! Precise and to the point! European football is really honing into view now. It's raised the roof of Bramall Lane. What a big win this is going to be for Sheffield United. Tonight is the night. Back into the big time. Sheffield United back in the Premier League. We've been really looking forward to this, coming back here. Pre-season was a bit stop-start, people are coming back at different intervals, different times. So this week's the first time we're all together. Uh, we know this facility well, I mean, you know, we came here last year and we loved it and we've all been looking forward to coming back and that's, that's the players and the staff, so yeah, it's good to be here, definitely. Right, let's get ready. <laughs> this morning then, boys. Um, you warm up, a little bit on the balls, and we're going to split you into the teams for tomorrow, OK? While one's doing a five-a-side, other one's with me doing just a little bit of us in possession, then we'll change, then we come together for a little bit of out-possession work, all right? Just our shape. Then that's it, that's the morning, OK? All yours, mate. Where are you, Tom? Let's go, mate. Any successful team, whether that's a sports, a sports team, business, anyone who's successful, you've got to be invested in each other. And we have to lead that and, and deliver that message all the time. So I'm going to take one, two, three, four, not you, five, probably up all six, just to stand for me as bodies. Okay. It's in the passing. Trips like this and, and times like this can, can help build that. Because um, people, when people talk about teams and teamwork, they'll generally only speak about the players, you know, but there's a team that drives the team and we, and we focus heavily on that as well. Maka, you, Jack and Juki drive the five holes then. Because I'll need the staff for the... Uh, I'm just going to have them stood still. Yeah, no, I'm, listen, if you need any more, I'd come on. I'll... No, no. Take Jack if you need, I'll have Jack. Or take Jack if you want him to do... No, no, I'll, I'll just take these boys. He knows the game. He's intellectual. He, he finished, you know, I think 30... Early 30s through injury. But nobody sees that side of it. They see now Paul like a manager of Barnes or Leeds or Hibs, and obviously it's Sheffield United now. But the work that he put into it... Um, and he's very studious about the game, very intellectual about the game. Right. If he's five yards higher and he gets under any sort of pressure and he needs to go long, he'll turn their back four or back five. Does that make sense to you? He sees the game really well. I think tactically, in game, uh, I think he's outstanding. He's the best I've seen at that in terms of stuff going on the pitch and an adjustment with a with a formation. Um, and he's very quick to to see it and act. He brings a real aggressive, winning mentality. Um, I think we've got that with the players as well. There's five! Will's gone! Will's gone! Good, oh, good decision, Marche! He's been unbelievable, you know, I think not just the manager, but the staff that he's brought in as well, you know, they've been, they've been incredible. They've improved a lot of players, but when they're bringing players in, they're very particular in terms of the, the characters and... Uh, the mentalities that the players have to, to come in and to be able to fit into the dressing room. Yeah, Wes can go, miss the front three out, miss the midfield three out, and we've got 5v4 with the wing backs. And you've got every option if you're that five yards higher to go in behind. Does that make sense to you? They make it a fun environment for us to come in every day. You know, it's, you get up and you want to come into football. You, my motivation levels have never been higher.
What a day for Sheffield United. This is what all the hard work was for. A return to the Premier League some 12 years after their last relegation from the top flight. You know, it was, it was, there was, there was some amazing times that season. We'll never forget, you know, with Chris Wilder and, and the staff that we had there. Stevens, Robinson, Sheffield United back in it. Over Egan, and they've put in by Mose. Will this be a second? Yes, it will. Same man. The fantastic flick. It's John Lundstrom, and it is brilliantly worked. The Blades are going to finish their campaign as a top half side. The boys, you know, that were, that were part of that team is, is something that will live with us forever. We're bringing you uh, the news from the English top flight that it has been suspended. It's all due to the coronavirus. The first year uh, when we were in the Premier League, it felt like when we were at home, a lot of the times we'd got a result before teams had come to the place. Robinson trying to improvise, McBurney, 3-3! Three, three. I think that's one of the main differences in the Covid season that we struggled with. A lot of teams thrived with, with the no pressure of no fans. I think we. We struggled not getting that extra 5% from our fans. Still the danger's not clear for Sheffield United. Adams, oh, that is superb! Well, Chris Wilder definitely needs a win. It has been a week of change, and for Sheffield United, life after Chris Wilder begins at the King Power Stadium against Leicester City. We gave Paul the caretaker management position in the, in the Premier League. But for those Sheffield United players, there is that sense of inevitability. And they know that as they take the field here at Molyneux tonight, this may well be the night that their fate becomes assured. William Jose, 1-0 the Wolves. Sheffield United hearts broken because that could well be the goal that sends them down to the championship. Sheffield United are relegated. It probably typifies our season, if I'm honest, the way that game's gone there. Obviously, we, we unfortunately didn't stay in the league. It was a really difficult task for him to actually even contemplate trying to do that at the time. We brought Slavisa in. We thought he was the right person with his pedigree and his, um, you know, his history of getting promoted out of the championship, but it just, it just didn't seem to fit. That's another tester. Bally's in there and it's tapped home. Callum Robinson joins the party. West Bromwich Albion have four. During that whole time, we always stayed in regular communication with Paul when he was still at the club, obviously, because we knew he had a long-term future here and we knew what he could bring. Um, so when we got to the point of, of deciding that we needed to make that change, Paul was obviously the, the, the first choice. seemed to be an acceptance that I would do the job when Slav left and that wasn't the case. For me, certain things had to be right to allow us to be successful. And I was really clear on who I'd want with me and how we'd want to work. Um, because there's a lot of things that I really uh, believed could be successful at Sheffield United. And because I did know the club and I'd been working there long enough, that the people, the players, the staff. Go for him. Bash. Yes, Bash. Oh, Redeemed himself. Tens, two clear points. When we reappointed Paul as manager, um, one of the things he asked straight away was he wanted specific coaches for specific areas. Um, so immediately we brought Jack Lester in from the academy as well as, as, as a striker coach. We obviously brought Stuart McCall in who deals with the midfield. And uh, I'm pleased to say obviously now we've got Mark Hudson who's come in this season uh, as a defensive coach. And I think you, you quite clearly see with the way it's working. See if, see if you can get him speaking, please. Yeah. Yeah. The staff was important. It, it, it was the first call I made because when asked to do this, um, the, the bit of pressure on a quick decision, that type of thing. First call, Stuart McCall, played for the club, big fan's favourite, uh, been assistant manager here before, and straight, yep, yeah, let's go. That, that was his answer, you know, so that was one box ticked. Came out the blue. I was um, shocked, stunned, but absolutely delighted to get it. Let's go! One, two, three, four. Coming to work at a club that I'd been at, somebody I knew, 
come to be an assistant manager to have more time on the grass with the players. Oh, when you look like a team, yeah. right, let's look like a team, you've got to move. When Paul brought me to the club, uh, Jack Lester uh, got promoted from the academy. I played with Jack, obviously, at Sheffield United. One, two, good dealing. We'd worked together previously um, when I was a cadre manager and he was, he, he, was, he was taking the 23s. We had a very good relationship before then anyway and, and we'd, we'd kind of worked how we're working a bit now in terms of the coaching anyway. Fans could identify with those two straight away, the three people there who know the club at the, the top end, which is important, who have similar uh, values. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone knows where they stand. <laughs> He's, you know, methodical in everything he does. It's there, and we all know it. Finally get up, it's 2v2 there. I'm delighted if Robbo plays in there all the time. 2v2, but we come, Boom. get round the ball. He gives his, his, his staff um, um, headway to get on with things and, and, and work how they want to work in individual units. My eyes are on the on the top of the pitch and, and the attacking stuff. So um, even when there's a defending session going on or or whatever it may be, my eyes are, are on on the strikers, the forwards, and and the link between the others. And you're not just rooted to spot. You're allowed to pass and move. Okay. 90 seconds left with a bit of 10 press ups. It's nice to be able to just work individually with people, but we still really, you know, we're still involved in the, the whole aspect of you know preparing for the game. Um, and you know, if it's you know, see something wrong at the back or whatever in training or in the game, you know, you can still just because you're a midfield coach, don't matter. So you can't tell the defenders to edit and kick it a bit further. Jack loves working with the strikers, so he works heavily with that. Stuart McCall managed more games than I have, played at the top top level, um, and he's there to help and support the midfielders. And then we brought in Mark Hudson, another person who's managed, which is a big help to me. From my personal experience, again, you know, that they've completely changed my outlook on football. I'm more motivated now than I ever have been, and a lot of that's down to the gaffer and, and the staff. Hold up, places it in! And there is the moment, and surely the goal that takes Sheffield United back to the Premier League. It's not easy. I think getting out of the championship is one of the hardest things in the world. So to get back out of the league and get back into the Premier League is a massive achievement for us, um, a huge relief for us. Delighted and, and I want everyone to enjoy and, and never forget that. That's what, that's what the sacrifices were for, that's what the conversations were about, that's what the meetings were for, that's what the hours were putting for and um, yeah, we managed to achieve that. Paul Heckingbottom has inspired his side, he's masterminded in this campaign and Sheffield United are promoted to the Premier League. I had five wonderful years here as a player and a coach previously. I think when I, I joined as a player at 38, and when I became assistant manager, you know, that helped me a lot because I was, you know, got on, you know, to, to go do the coaching, which was um, was brilliant for my education. Maka was a top player as well, you know, obviously represented, you know, Everton, Rangers, his country, um, you know, and, and then as a manager in his own right. Press up, Shebo Eakes! Bash! Yash, 2010! He's great with the players. Mac is great with the players. You know, he loves um, he loves a laugh when the time's right. Much better today, weren't you? Did you have a good sleep? Did you have a good sleep? Or did you just wake up realising you're a footballer trying to get in a team? I think he, he'll enjoy that assistant manager's role because he, he does enjoy being in the dressing room. Sometimes as a manager, you've, you've got to step away from the players, whereas I think when you're an assistant manager, you can, you can step towards them, uh, and he'll, he'll enjoy that role. Over there, come on, then. Who's your favourite song? 
the last time when you know I was assistant to Neil. We always felt we were building something, you know, to, to have a go, and, and thankfully we got the got the promotion. Um, and then that season, yeah, obviously it's excitement. Everyone's buzzing to be back in the Premier League today, and for the first time in seven seasons, Sheffield has Premiership football. When you get promoted, you always want that first game at home. We were playing against Liverpool at, at home, you know, one of the biggest clubs in Europe, so we knew it was going to be a huge test. Unsworth gets it in there, Hulls has scored! Rob Hulls stands Liverpool! We believed in ourselves. We knew we'd got good players. The gaffer had brought a, you know, a, a couple of good, experienced players in who, who also knew the league. Stead goes alone and finishes superbly. Oh, and the header comes in, and this time it's Morgan. Of, of all the good times, you always remember that afternoon against Wigan here. The setting for this showdown, Bramall Lane, one of the most passionate and intimidating stadiums. The cop is jam-packed. And as for putting a value on the outcome of the game, well, name your price for Premier League survival. It was a, a huge kick in the teeth. It was one goal in the end that we got relegated by, so you, you're talking very, very, very fine margins. What would Wigan give for a goal here and now? Kill bad. Chance, goal! Paul Sharda and Wigan, who have to win, lead at Bramall Lane. Listen, it was hugely disappointed on the last day of the season to, to get relegated. We needed to get a point uh, against Wigan, and unfortunately, um, our ex player, uh, Unzi, came back and scored the penalty. He left in search of Premier League salvation. And he may just have provided it for Wigan. You couldn't make it up. If you get to the end of the season and you're in the relegation places or you're in the promotion places, you know, you, you, you're there for a reason. Now there are tears. Sheffield United have been cut down. The Blades are relegated in the most dramatic of circumstances. We obviously want to, to last more than one season and I think looking back, we, we probably should have done. We all ourselves to blame in the end. The football club in general um, has, has not changed massively. I think certainly within the staff and the players, they seem an honest, down-to-earth bunch that want to work for each other. And I look back and I think that was one of our, our biggest successes. You know, we had no we had no superstars in the team. You know, we had we had good players, you know, like that, like the current squad. First year, I can really accept that I'm probably one of the experienced older pros, which I don't know how I feel about it. It's the best plan of each of you in these 10 minutes for the brief to competition. I turned 27 last month, so I think um, I'm officially, you know, when we do all the young, I'm always in the old team now, which is it's, it's a bit of a tough one to take for me. Well, we're recruiting players in, into the unknown, so we're not sure how they're going to react straight away into that level. We're not. Whereas the senior boys have been there and seen it, um, understand what they're going into. So there's a big focus on them to be able to lead and, and drive the team. Being more of a leader within the group, within the striker group and within the group altogether, you know, uh, it's something that the gaffer thinks I'll, I'll be good at and I'll thrive on. Hopefully I can help pass on whatever experience and wisdom that I have. <laughs> <laughs> We've got lads who obviously were about when, when they got relegated from the Premier, but we've also got a lot, of, a lot of lads who came up and had the first season when they finished ninth. You like to your John Egan's and your, your Basham's, Norwood's, Flex, you know, guys like this who've been here uh, and round the place and round the club. <laughs> I have always said since, oh, well, I'm getting on a bit now, but for, for many years, your football club is only as good as your, your senior professionals, and we've got some real good senior professionals in there who are leading by example in the dressing room. There's a couple of things, but just to go into this game, it reminds us about us in possession, 
main points, dropping out and goal kicks. There's a shape. Over the passing lane, ball into the front, who would just be man for man, <coughs> joining off the fall pass. And then out of possession, that front three. Two triggers to press, it's the one wide, or it's the nine pressing. Okay? So let's go. The last few years I've struggled with injuries during pre-seasons off summer, so I've not had a proper pre-season since I've been at Sheffield United, which is crazy. They're not the most enjoyable. They're not, uh, you know, I always say nothing ever good really comes from a pre-season game. No matter who you're playing, <laughs> pitch is always sticky, it's always too hot. Um, if you play a team lower than you, you're always expected to win, but it's never that simple. The gaffer just says go out and get what you need out of them games, especially the first couple, when we're doing 45 minutes. It's about getting your high speed up, your distance up, getting your running up, um, and just getting back in the game situation, getting your body prepped for the, for the season. I'll definitely be happy when we're in the, with the proper games and not the free season games anymore. Seeing all the boys every day, just having the banter that we do in and around, you know, you miss it in the off season. Yeah, the season palace is just around the corner, so you know we get we've still got a bit more work to do, fitness wise, get our, get ourselves to where we want to be. The graph is putting us through our paces, but um, it's so exciting to be back on the on the big stage and playing against the best players in the world. It's a very positive environment. I think people and players and staff enjoy coming into work. <laughs> it's driven, you know, you don't just come in and go home. There's people that are here very early and go home very late and it doesn't feel like work. I think as a coach and when you're working in this industry, you want to be involved in something that's been moving forward. We've had an opportunity with, with this group to be progressive and move the club into the next level and the top level, if you like. So being involved in that is, is exciting. We all have our own goals in terms of where we think we are. You know, we'll speak about it privately within, within ourselves sometimes, but everyone knows we want to stay in the Premier League. That's where we want to be. We want to be competing in that league every year. Um, and become a recognised Premier League club and, and that's what we want to do and that starts off by staying in the Premier League this year. This season we're going to be looking you know, more at the bottom half than the top half and that's you know, not being negative, it's just being realistic. It's that one game at a time but um, naturally we want, to, we want to be in the Premier League for, for years to come and you know, get the first season, hopefully stay up and then start building again. Go on, step it, step it, step it, step it, good lad, good lad. What you'll see is everyone giving 100% and doing, doing their best uh, on and off the pitch to, to keep us in this league. And that, I think that's all you can ask of, of everyone here. Let's be honest, the Premier League is the, the best stage in, in football, in my opinion, in the world. Tight! Perfect, perfect. Perfect. We're stepping into the unknown in terms of the group of players who will really be challenged to make their mark in the Premier League. Get round the ball, we've took six out of the game with Robbo's pass. OK? So it's just on Dave O, then whatever Dave O plays. We've got a mantra, outrun, outfight, outplay. 
And, and that is how we try and behave, how we try and recruit, how we try and coach. And our fans can really identify with that, you know. So our performances, we want there to be a connection between our performances and the fans and make sure that we represent them in, in the right way. And hopefully, anyone who watched um, a Sheffield United team play, regardless what colours we played in, will be able to say that's a, that's a Sheffield United performance.